hello everyone welcome back so today in this video i'll discuss about the relationship between e0 and b0 that is e0 equal to c b0 and we will establish this relationship using your uh, one of the maxwell's equations uh, that is uh, your faraday's law basically we will use the relationship that uh, your e d l equal to minus d phi b d t that is basically your faraday's law and this is also one of the maxwell's equation out of so this is faraday's law so this law tells us that the rate of change of your magnetic flux is creating a induced emf or uh, if we will integrate over the line integral then we will get the uh, your electric component so uh, from this equation we will establish this relationship that is e0 equal to cb0 so in the previous video we have uh, discussed about the displacement current the modified versions of ampere's law and how maxwell's uh, uh, proved that that uh, the varying electric field also can generate the magnetic field using a capacitor and we have we discussed that so here uh, we will first calculate the left hand side that is edl will integrate and we will consider let us the wave is propagating in x direction and this is your y direction and this is your z direction and also we know that the electric component and magnetic component they are mutually perpendicular to each other so if electric vector electric your component is progressing parallel to y x y plane then your magnetic component will propagate along x z plane parallel to x z plane and uh, let's say the wave is propagating in x direction so how will you write such a uh, your electric component so your electric component will be your e0 sine kx minus omega t so we will represent your electric the magnitude will re represent uh, the electric uh, component of this electromagnetic wave e equal to e0 sin kx minus omega t so it's progressing in x direction right and you can write ui also this is uh, um, this wave is uh, parallel to your know, electric components parallel to xy plane and your b is oscillating along z axis so your bz will be basically b0 sine and it is also progressing in x direction they are mutually perpendicular to each other so you can write this is kx minus omega t fine now we will imagine a parallel rectangle that is parallel to basically xy plane and let's say we will calculate the integral over it so let's say this is point a this is point b c and d and we will move like this along the line of this rectangle so we will calculate the line integral that left side for this rectangle and let's say this height is let's say length l and the point a is let's say the in x axis this x is equal to let's say this point is x1 this x is equal to x2 here at point b so what will calculate basically edl will calculate over the line will calculate the integral so we'll calculate basically this close for the close interval we'll calculate e this is a to b e your 
dl uh, dl is uh, basically uh, okay so e dl will write like this and e at uh, okay so this is e dl plus your b to c e dot dl right plus your e dot dl c to d right a to b b to c c to d we are calculating the integral over your uh, line so this is your d to a etl so now you see electric field i have uh, mentioned that electric field is um, your uh, oscillating or progressing parallel to y axis means uh, moving progressing along x axis but uh, oscillating or your vibrating along x y plane so your uh, this is your propagation that is l right that is your dl in this direction and your e is parallel so that means electric field and your propagation e dot dl here uh, dot product is there so it will be uh, cos 90 degree right uh, for ab ab you can see the, this is your x uh, dl direction and this will be your e direction this parallel to xy plane so 90 degree so this one will be zero a to b similarly c to d also will be zero so this term we are calculating basically close inter integral of we are calculating e dl over a closed surface basically so these two terms this term will become zero and c to d also will become zero only these two terms will be there where l and e are parallel here l and e are opposite e and l are opposite so what we can write basically for position b uh, b to c we can write that uh, integration your edl is uh, basically e dot dl is e at your x2 and uh, dl is the length is uh, l if we we'll integrate c to b your dl will become l and uh, c minus b that will be the length l so e2 e at x2 into l will be the e dl b to c and d to a e at x1 and your uh, d to a it's opposite right so minus l will come minus l because length we are if we will take positive length this is this one you have to take the negative l so finally what we are getting over the closed integral uh, what is the e dl total right integration we are doing so basically we are getting e2 e x2 l or you can say l common e x2 minus e x1 and what is e e you can replace here we will replace that later so this is what we get left side of your Faraday's law now what will be the right side of the Faraday's law now we know that your magnetic field is your oscillating in xz plane which will be perpendicular to this rectangle so if we will take one small rectangular uh, shape uh, that is having dx width and length l so this area your for this area your magnetic field will be perpendicular to this right so magnetic field will be perpendicular to this one so we'll find out the total for this one for this much of area what is the total magnetic field so b dot a total area will calculate 
and which will give us the flux basically and d5 by dt will calculate which will give us the magnetic field associated with this much of electric field means when this electric field is this one we'll calculate the magnetic uh, your rate of change of magnetic flux during this so what will be our magnetic flux our magnetic flux your phi b is basically b b into the area flux is the b dot da so area is here l dx so b l dx is your phi b right is your phi b and what is your b basically uh, this is your uh, this is you can say this is your d phi b for the small one we will calculate for the total area right so this is your b l dx now what will be phi b phi b will be basically integration and this dx width will will expand will integrate means will cut similar uh, your strips so strips will the integration will start from x equal to x is equal to x equal to 1 to x is equal to 2 it will uh, the range so the range will write this is x1 to x2 and uh, bl dx right so this will be your phi b rate will calculate later first let us calculate this phi b so phi b basically is your if we'll put uh, b here so integration x1 to x2 b is b0 sin kx minus omega t and kx minus omega t means the wave is propagating along x-axis positive x-axis kx plus omega t wave is propagating towards the negative x-axis because kx minus omega t it will be a constant so x is increasing t is increasing so the difference will be constant so kx minus omega t is a wave that is progressing towards x-axis right so x1 to x2 and b will represent with uh, b0 sin kx minus omega t k wave number 2 pi by lambda omega 2 pi by t all these things you know so b0 sin omega t and l dx dx and l fine so first we will integrate with x respect to x so k will come out k will be divided right so integration you know sine will become minus cos and uh, this uh, argument that is kx minus omega t k will be divided this one will become zero uh, right so yes not zero so uh, integration we are doing we can uh, use the substitution integration by substitution you can substitute with something like z so your dx will be uh, dz by k so you can find this is sin z sin z uh, integration is minus minus cos z so you will get uh, minus minus d0 l by k right and this one you will get cos kx minus omega t fine and this one is x1 to x2 the range is x1 to x2 now you can put x2 here and subtract with x1 so what will be the what you will get basically you will get phi b equal to your minus b0 l phi b equal to minus b0 l by k and uh, this one you will get put x2 here in place of k then subtract putting x1 you know that, that this thing's integration so this is cos k x2 minus omega t minus cos k x1 
minus omega t. So this is what you are getting 5b. But what we will calculate? We will calculate the rate of change of flux. That is d5 by dt. So d5 by dt equal to you will differentiate. Now think. Here we integrated with your dx expanding dx. The range is from x1 to x2. So here k comes out. Omega t we are not touching here. But here we are differentiating with t. The rate of change of flux. So which one will come out? Omega will come out. This one will not. Uh, this one will keep as constant. Right. So omega will come out. And what you will get? This is you will get minus b0 l by k and this one omega will come out and cos differentiation is sine and this one so sine a minus sign basically sine k x2 and uh, this one is uh, the differentiation of the argument is this one is zero and this one is minus omega so minus and minus of omega that is plus omega right so omega i am writing plus omega here cos differentiation is minus here another minus is there minus omega so minus of minus is plus omega i am writing right i think clear so again here cos minus and minus so minus minus plus so minus will be there minus cos you can write here minus cos omega this is also sine sine kx1 minus omega t fine now what you will do this is your d5 by dt so using faraday's law our this one edl edl this one let's say equation 1 and this is your equation 2 so your equation 1 and equation 2 left hand side equal right so right hand side will be minus d5 means it will be plus so right hand side will be equal now you see if we we'll bring omega outside this is kx minus omega t minus fine so here omega will come outside then sin kx2 minus omega t so sin kx2 minus omega t here also if we will see if we will take e0 outside then it will be sin kx2 omega t minus sin kx1 omega t right so what we will get basically so from 1 and 2 so if you want to write it minus then it will become plus if you want to transfer minus because this one equal to this okay so from 1 and 2 what you can write you can write that this one also you can take omega common so your l l e x2 minus e x1 basically e0 will come common then sin kx2 minus omega t and minus sin kx1 minus omega t this is what your left hand side of equation 1 and from 2 omega will common so this will equal to b0 l by k omega sin kx2 minus omega t and this is your minus sin kx1 minus omega t so this one what you can do fine so uh, this are seen both side cancelled out l l also will cancel out so what is there e0 equal to b0 omega by k now you know omega by k is your speed speed of the wave here in vacuum the electromagnetic wave is 
propagating so omega by k is speed of the light basically c will come up omega is 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by t here 2 pi by lambda so lambda by t is basically distance by time uh, dimension will come so it's basically speed of light uh, so c so omega by k is c so now hence we can write that e0 equal to c b0 now hence both are same also you can write that e equal to c b you can also write or you can write e0 equal to c b0 so this is the proof i think uh, it's clear to you only the differentiation and some integration we have done and uh, uh, in Halliday Resnick or in some other book uh, some logic is other logic is there also but this logic is there also uh, in some good kind good uh, or means uh, um, good books so you can go through this derivation if you find any uh, difficulties or any doubt in any strip you can write in the comment box i'll try uh, if possible i'll try to make another video clarifying your doubts so thank you for watching the video see you tomorrow with uh, another video bye bye take care